Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, this video is for math for business and finance and also math applications. And this here is for, it's part of chapter one and the video is going to be called how to dissect and solve a word problem. And this here is a theory, con uh, theory type of video. Um, if you notice in the first chapter of the textbook, uh, the title of the chapter is Whole Numbers, How to Dissect and Solve Word Problems. So for most part, this here concept of how to dissect and solve a word problem is the most important thing in this chapter, and that's why I'm making a video on it and to go over it. But more importantly, um, solving word problems is something that you're going to do throughout the rest of this textbook. So you need to be able to get it um, other, and otherwise as you go forward it's just going to be more and more and more difficult so you have to have some kind of thought process in order to be able to solve word problems and a lot of students do have a difficult time with it okay so that's why I've created this video now if you look in the text um, it will let me get to the next slide here if you uh, look in the text it will uh, present a blueprint uh, aid for solving word problems. Um, it shows you, you know, that you should look for the facts, okay, and then solve for what, uh, steps to take, and key points. And while this blueprint is pretty good, I mean, you should know what the facts of a problem are, you should understand what you're solving for, and then you also have to think about what steps you should take and if there's any key points that you might learn from it, uh, you would know you should know that. But for me, I'm going to give you just some additional uh, thoughts about doing word problems, and maybe this will help you. Okay, so these are additional thoughts, and this is what I think about when it, or how I go about thinking on word problems. Right? So first, um, practice. Okay, you know this here idea of practice makes perfect. Well practice you have to do a lot of practice in order to be able to get it um, it's not you know I kind of like look at it from this perspective if everybody did 1,000 problems all right well then by the if they concentrated on those 1,000 problems everybody be able to do word problems without even worrying about it okay they would know what to do just like many people who have finished the subject or myself I, I don't concern myself with how to do a word problem because I've done so many of them but the issue becomes if all you're going to do is just read the problem try to work it out look at the answer and put and move on well for you to be able to quote unquote get it it's going to take you a lot longer to get it okay but if you concentrate and you actively think about what you're doing sure you're gonna to have to do a lot of problems but it shortens the amount of time before quote unquote you get it okay now um, another thing I think about is is I read the problem at least twice if not more times until I understand what the problem is asking for all right um, I kind of have to like see the problem in my head I see the data that's being presented and I know what the problem is asking for and it's in my head this is about problem solving it's like putting a puzzle together you have to you know when you have a puzzle and you're moving the pieces around you have to see in your mind how the pieces fit in order to get them to fit and this is no different um, these next uh, bullet points are a little bit important to, at least this is the way I view the information you know when I see a problem I see that every problem has information now some of that information is directly related to solving the problem in other words you use that number as it is okay but then some of the information has nothing to do with the problem okay so you kind of like oh well you know that has nothing to do so you kind of like toss that number out but right here is where everyone has a difficult time with okay some of the information needs to be modified to be able to use to solve the problem so what happens is when they first look at a problem and they see this number well that number doesn't you know it's not being directly used 
Okay, so they have a tendency to think that that number has nothing to do with the problem, and they toss it out. And what they don't realize is that it, you know some of that information, that data, has to be modified. And when it gets modified, then it becomes directly useful in solving the problem. So this is the, the key stumbling block, um, and for me anyway, is always having to make sure that I understand the whole concept, I understand the problem, and I have to modify it in the correct way. Okay? And this requires, you know, thinking actively about the problem, right? You have to think, okay? You can't just read and copy and mimic, all right? You're not going to get it. You see a problem in the book. If you just read the problem and then, you know, try to quickly work it out and look at the answer and go, okay, I get it without understanding why the answer is what it is, what will happen is, is you'll come across another problem and then you'll go and you'll say, okay, well, ah, let me, you know, copy or mimic that problem that I saw before. The trouble with that is, is that the new problem is not exactly the same as the old one. Generally, there's a slight difference and everybody has a tendency to call them, you know, tricks. It's a trick question, okay? Well, it's not a trick question. It's just not the same as it was before. And if you're not actively thinking about the problem, um, you're going to miss, quote unquote, those little tricks. You know, um, part of actively thinking about it is, is I have to fill in information. Okay. Um, I'm, as I'm reading the problem and I'm trying to understand it, I'm trying to come up with, in, in my head, everything that's possible about that problem. Now, I may not use it, okay, but it doesn't hurt to to have thought about it and to have that information. And a lot of times I might be, when I'm actively thinking about it, I might come up with information that, you know, is one of the answers to the questions. Okay, so um, you'll see what I mean when I go through these next couple of examples, which are from in your book. Okay, so here was one of the word problems um, from the chapter. It says, Dunkin' Donuts sells to four different companies a total of $3,500 worth of donuts per week. What is the total annual sales to these companies? What is the yearly sales per company? Assume each company buys the same amount. Check your answer to show how multiplication and division are related. Okay. Now, I just read that one time. All right. You know, I do this a lot, and... Quite honestly, there's too much there for me to be able to read it once and say, I got it, okay? I need to go back and read it a second, possibly a third or fourth time, in order to get the information and figure out what's what's going on. Uh, you can't just read a question one time and think you're going to get it, right? So, as I go back, it says, Dunkin' Donuts sells to four different companies, right? Well, in my head as I'm working this problem, I, I'm thinking about four companies, and for a total, all right, of $3,500 worth of donuts per week. Now, what does that mean to me? Well, even just that little bit of information, now remember, this is a fact, all right? There's four companies, $3,500 a week. Those are the facts. Um, I'm also inferring that, well, I could divide four into 3500 which would give me about... 870 some 75 ish I'm guessing I don't need to be exact but I can kind of like think well on an average this is how much each per week realizing that company one might be more you know company two might be less okay company three might hit that average right and company four might also hit that average I don't know but notice what I'm doing is, is I'm actively thinking about the information, okay? All right, so then it says, what is the total sales, total annual sales to these companies? Ah, okay. Well, what is the total annual sales? Well, if per week it's 3500 right, and that's per week, well, I know there's 52 weeks in a year, right, per year. So I would have to multiply by 52. And that will give me the answer to my that first question that it's asking. And that answer happens to be $182,000. Now, remember, I'm actively thinking, all right? Um, that's for all four companies. 
right? Because that was a total of 3,500 a week, so that's a total of 182,000 for the year for all four companies. Right? Now it's going to ask me what is the yearly sales per company? Well, okay, so now it's asking me that question, and remember, I had already, in the back of my mind, thought about this. Okay, what could be those yearly sales? But now it's going to the data is going to give me additional information. It's going to say, assume each company buys the same amount. Okay. Well, with knowing that each one is going to be the same, that means I'm going to take 182,000 and I'm going to divide it by four because each company gets an equal amount. So when I divide by four, the uh, that's going to equal $45,500. For each company. So I've answered my first question that was being asked is 182,000, and I've answered the second question of 45,500. Okay. Now it says check your answer to show how multiplication and division are related. Right? Well, this this was division. Okay. I divide up four, four into 182,000. Now if I take uh, the 45,500 and multiply it by 4, right? I should come up with 182,000. Okay? And that's how they're related, right? If I divide by 4, I get this number. Okay? If I multiply by 4, I get this number. All right? So that was the first word problem. So now, let me move on to another word problem real quick. Hershey's produced 25 million kisses in one day. Okay. The same day the company shipped 4 million to Japan, 3 million to France, 6 million throughout the United States. At the end of the day, what is the company's total inventory of kisses? What is the inventory balance if you rounded the number all of the way? Right. So Hershey produced 25 million kisses in one day. That's a fact. Okay. Now, the same day they shipped. Well, if I'm shipping something, that means it's going out the door. So that means I have less. Right. Now, when they produced the 25 million, okay, I mean, that's one day. You know, I could think in terms of, well, you know, if I'm thinking beyond the scope or, or try to figure out everything that I can kind of think about it could say well how much would that be in a week um, how much would that be in a month or how much would that be in a year all right I could just keep these things in mind but since this is for the day and now it's saying it's shipped which means it's going out the door that means I'm going to be less four million okay and then it also ships three million to France and six million to the United States. Well, if it's shipping four, three, and six, that means a total of 13 million were shipped. Right? Notice how I went and I just uh, created that information. Okay, um, it's not something that uh, you saw in the problem, right? But because I was actively thinking about it, I, I was able to fill that in. And now I can take that 25 million and subtract the 13 million and end up with 12 million. That means there's still 12 million sitting in my factory. Okay? So it says, at the end of the day, what is the company's total inventory of Hershey Kisses? Okay? Well, I just figured that out. 12 million. I could have done it by saying, okay, I had 25, and then I subtracted 4, which would give me 21. And then I subtracted 3, which would give me 18. And then I subtracted 6, which would give me 12. Okay, that's one way of doing it. But I could have taken a, another tact, and like I said, add it all up and come up with the 13 million that went out the door, and then subtract the to from the total and end up with 12 million. Okay? Um, so, you know, it says, what is the inventory balance if you round the number all of the way? All right, well, it's uh, 
let me see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Now I'm not too swift on that part. So let me just put you just one quick look here. So uh, if it's 12 million and I'm going to round all the way, okay, so that's 12 million. And I'm going to round all the way. That means I'm going to round all the way to here. Okay. So I start out with one. All right. And then I'm going to use the two to round. And since that is less than five, that means I'm going to round down. So I round to 10 million. And that answers that particular question. Okay. So I hope you understood that. If you had, if you didn't, you know, feel free to call in and speak with an instructor. Okay. But I'm going to jump back up here and real quick, you know, when you're reading a word problem, think about the facts, figure out what the problem is solving for, and then what steps to take. But like I had said, you know, you need a lot of practice and read the problem several times. Okay. Each problem has information and you have to decide what is directly related to solving the problem. What has information has nothing to do with solving the problem and what information needs to be modified. Okay. If you think actively about the problem, you fill in information even though it may not be used. Now the two problems I presented are relatively easy and it, it really didn't have anything to do with modifying and uh, I didn't have to fill in that much information. But remember what I had originally said that this first chapter, this is the main key in this particular chapter. But you know, this idea of solving word problems is in every single chapter in this textbook. I mean, because that's all you're going to be doing is word problems. So by using this thought process, um, as the problems become more and more difficult, you'll see how uh, these, uh, this way of thinking um, will help you be able to solve the word problems better. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to call and speak with an instructor. All right, thanks and have a great day.